Okay, so we're going to take a look at a projectile motion problem. And this one, this one might seem familiar to some of you. So I was talking with my nephew the other day and he showed me this game. And I forget what he called it, but it featured some birds that were trying to do some projectile motion. Now, as I recall, my nephew had this setup where he had like a slingshot or something. And you would have these birds. They were incredibly upset, and I don't remember why. But uh, they would get in these slingshots, and they were trying to attack these structures some distance away that were really poorly constructed. That just terrible, terrible work on them. And there are these pigs over there. And I guess they're the pig structures, and so I guess that kind of makes sense. They're not built incredibly well, because pigs have little hooves and not opposable digits. So construction isn't really their thing. And I'm trying to remember what it was. What was that word? It, it was something, he described it as uh, incredibly upset birds. The, the word eludes me, but that's not important. So he originally set this up, and I, I saw he was able to do a touch screen thing, where he kind of pulled this bird back on the little launcher and he was making an angle of about, let me check my notes, where did I put that, there it is. He made an angle with the horizontal of about 60 degrees. And then he let go of it and I noticed that uh, this, this very irate bird went flying off at a velocity that I estimate of about 16 meters per second. Okay. In the end, I was wondering exactly how far away this bird was from this incredibly poorly done pig fortress. Very strange game. I can't remember the name. All right, let's see if it comes to me. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and analyze this. Let's see if we can find our delta x, how far that bird goes with all of its ire. So it's going to fly off, land hopefully right over here in the pig fortress to exact some vengeance. All right, so this is a projectile motion problem. So I'm going to draw out my two dimensions. I've got delta x, my initial, or I'm sorry, my final velocity in the x direction, my initial velocity in the x direction, my time, and my acceleration in the x direction. Hopefully I'm not getting too low on the frame there. I'll redraw it if I need to before. Delta y, okay, well, let's see, I'm starting off at ground level, effectively, I'm coming back down to ground level, so that's probably going to be zero meters, because I'm coming back down more or less to where I launched from, all right. I'm looking for my delta x, that's what I want. Don't know my final velocity in the x. We'll see about my final velocity, or I'm sorry, my initial velocity in the x in just a moment. Time, don't know. And my acceleration, well, like most of them, is zero meters per second squared. Nothing accelerating the, the very distraught bird in the x direction. Okay, so I've got my final velocity in the y. Don't know what that is. My initial velocity in the y. We'll take a look at that in just a moment, because we've got some information about our initial velocity. We'll see what we can find out. Time, don't know. And our acceleration in the y, well, it's due to gravity. This whole thing is supposed to take place on Earth, I think. At least in the classic game. He started talking about this other one, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm already confused. Pigs building fortresses. Where do they come up with these ideas? All right. So, usually we'll start over in the y direction. We've got a bit more information about that. Let's take a look at our initial velocities. Now, I've drawn out that this displeased avian is starting off at 16 meters per second, at 60 degrees to the horizontal. Okay, well I can find my components on that. That's a velocity vector. So my initial velocity in the x equals my magnitude. Well, let's go ahead and do this the third way. So, ka, toa. Okay, for my x, I'm looking for the adjacent side, because it's right next to my angle. So ka is cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. I'm going to multiply both sides 
by the hypotenuse. And my adjacent side is my v naught x, so I find out that my hypotenuse, 16 meters per second, times cosine of my angle, which is 60 degrees, equals my adjacent, which is v naught x. Cool. Well, I can evaluate that. Let's see. When I solve for that, I find out that my x velocity initially is 8 meters per second. All right. So now let's do the same thing for our initial in the y, because we'll probably need that. Well, this time I'm dealing with the opposite side and the hypotenuse, or I could do Pythagorean theorem. But let's go ahead and get some more experience in with our trig functions. When I work this all out, I'm going to find out that it comes up to 16 meters per second times sine of 60 degrees equals v naught in the y direction. And when I evaluate that, that's going to come up to 13.86 meters per second. Cool. Now I have my initial velocity in the y and the x. In the x, it was 8 meters per second. And in the y, it was 13 point, what did I say? 86. 86 meters per second. Okay. So in the y, I have my acceleration, my initial velocity, and my displacement, because it's coming back down to the same height, more or less, that it started from. Cool. So I can find what I want. In this case, like most projectile motion problems, what the x and the y have in common is the time. Because whatever motion is going on in the y, it ends when it hits the ground. And whatever motion is going on in the x, that ends when it hits the ground. So the y should actually be straight up and down, and then x should be off to the side. But when this very displeased bird yeah, hits the ground, show's over. So the time is the same between the two. So I want to find the time because that's my bridge between the two dimensions, so to speak. So what I don't have and don't care about in my y direction is my final velocity. Maybe I'll care about it if we end up with one of those icky quadratics, but I don't think that's going to happen. Let's see. So the equation that I have to use is the one that doesn't have my final velocity in it, and I don't have my equation sheet over here. I seem to have misplaced all of them. However, I can tell you, as I go get one, I look down my chart. It's missing from the second equation here. It's the very popular second equation. So in this case, delta y equals our initial velocity in the y times time plus 1 half a sub y t squared. OK, well, if I start plugging in values, my delta y is equal to 0. My initial velocity, so I'm going to have 0 equals initial velocity in the y, was 13.86. 13.86 meters per second times t plus 1 half times a sub y is going to be 1 half negative 9.81 meters per second squared, t squared. OK, well, I can divide both sides by t because otherwise I'd end up with an unpleasant quadratic. That t cancels out with that one and gets rid of that squared. And 0 divided by anything other than 0 is 0. So that t just kind of goes away because we're dealing with 0. So cleaning it up some, I have 0 equals 13.86 meters per second plus 1 half negative 9.81 meters per second squared times just one value of t. It's t raised to the 1, because I canceled a bunch of t's out. OK, well, I'm going to multiply this out. So I'll have 13.86 meters per second minus 9.81 divided by 2. So that's going to be, did I write that down, or am I going to? Yeah, I think I multiplied them around. That's fine. 9.81 divided by 2. Negative, oops, I already have the negative, that's my that's why my plus changed to a negative. 4.905, that's meters per second squared times time. Okay. Well, I'm gonna add this to both sides. I do the same thing to both sides, we're in good shape, and I end up with 4.905 meters per 
meters per second squared times time equals 13.86 meters per second. I want to get time by itself, so I'm going to divide by 4.905 meters per second squared. Same thing on both sides. 4.905 meters per second squared. The meters cancel out. One second gets rid of that second squared, so I have one over seconds in the denominator. It flips up and we'll have a value in seconds, which is good because it's supposed to be a time. And that should come up to 2.82 seconds. Cool. Now I have my time. T, that got canceled out. So T equals that. All right. So now I have my T. Going back up here, I know that my T is equal to 2.82 seconds in both the Y and the X, because that's when the wrathful bird ends up hitting the porcine palace. Is that a good description? All right. So I'm in my home stretch. I want to find delta X. I know my initial velocity. I know my acceleration. And now I know the time. The only thing I don't know and don't care about is my final velocity in the x, which technically I kind of know because my acceleration is equal to zero, but that's fine. So I'm using, once again, my second equation, delta x equals v naught times time plus one half a t squared. I start plugging in values and I have delta x, which I'm looking for, equals my initial velocity in the x direction, which was eight meters per second times the time, which was 2.82 seconds, what we found, plus one half acceleration, which was zero meters per second squared, times, I'm not even going to fill in the time, which is 2.82 squared, because it's going to be multiplied by zero. It's gone. So our delta x equals eight meters per second times 2.82 seconds. The sec per second cancels out with the second. And we end up with 8 times 2.8, we should come up with 22.6 meters. That is how far the very displeased bird flew to attack the bee pigs. Now, I just have to remember that name. Angry. It was angry.